Hey guys, and welcome to this new video. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that I didn't write this article. The original article was written by a man named Gregory Maxwell. And I will put a link in the description to the original article. And uh, secondly, uh, some parts of the article have been skipped by me. Because I don't think they were necessary for my video. And third of all, uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys. I've just reached 10 subscribers. Thanks for that. And now, on with the video. In 1970, California carrier Pacific Southwest Airlines, or PSA, was flying high. The airline, which started in 1949 with a single DC-3, had, had grown to become a dominant carrier in California, posting 15 straight years of profits. PSA was the original pioneer of the low-cost, high-frequency model, which Southwest Airlines later made famous. PSA founder Ken Fredkin believed that he could carve out a very successful niche, providing passengers with low-cost, high-frequency flights between California's major cities. Because all the flights would take place within the state of California, his airline would not be tied to the restrictive policies of the Civil Aeronautics Board, which had prices and regulated all interstate carriers in the United States at the time. Fredkin, Fredkin theorized that if the airline priced its fares low enough, it could attract passengers away from the railroads and provide an alternative to the automobile. The formula was a smashing success. Unfeathered by the CIB, PSA was free to set its own ticket prices and start new routes as it saw fit. In order to exp expedite the passengers' boarding process, the carrier didn't assign seats, and it also maximized daily aircraft utilization through quick ground turnarounds. All of these measures to help all of these measures helped to keep the costs down the airline branded the world's friendliest airline developed a reputation for unmatched cast customer service it even went so far as to paint smiles on the noses of all of all its aircraft nicknaming them grinning birds passengers flocked to the airline attracted by the low fares but they stayed because of the airline's legendary service by 1970, PSA served seven destinations across the state of California, from its base at San Diego's Lindbergh Field earning a profit of $3.6 million and transporting over 5 million passengers that year. The core of the airline's business was shuttling, up tr was shuttling travelers up and down the coast between San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Passenger traffic throughout the previous decade had grown rapidly so much so that the airline terminals were becoming overwhelmed and airlines worried that if the pace of growth continued the whole system might grind to a halt under the weight of demand the 747 whose entry in 19 in, whose entry into service in 1969 heralded the the arrival of the wide body era seemed to be the ideal solution to meet the increasing demand and reduce the strain on overwhelmed airport facilities with the added capacity that wide-body aircraft like the 747, DC-10, and L-1011 provided, airlines could consolidate several narrow-body flights into one, thus reducing airport congestion. PSA agreed, and in 1970 signed a contract with the Lockheed Corporation for two L-1011s, which, which was still undergoing certification testing at the time. The airline planned to introduce the aircraft on its high-density commuter routes between San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, with delivery of the first aircraft slated for 1972. However, shortly after signing the contract, the airline learned that the l 1011s sole engine supplier, Rolls-Royce, had gone bankrupt. With the future of the aircraft program now in doubt, PSA cancelled its order, and re-evaluated the competing Airbus A300 and McDonnell Douglas DC-10 products. Lockheed had its own financial problems, owing the development of the C-5A Galaxy, which was based on a fixed-price contract, with all cost overruns having to be paid out of pocket by the manufacturer. Eventually, the government, not wanting to lose a frontline military aerospace company, bailed the company out, guaranteeing loans of up to $250 million. Lockheed and Rolls-Royce finally settled on a price for the redesigned engine, 
which would put the company back in the in the black and allow Lockheed to avoid a costly delay to certification while it redesigned the aircraft to accommodate a competing engine from General Electric or Pratt and Whitney. In 1972, PSA, convinced the, that the Elton 11 was the right aircraft for its future, recommitted to the Elton 11 signing a contract for five aircraft. The two scheduled for delivery in 1974 and one in 1975, 1976 and 1977. The airline opted for a high-density single-class cabin configuration seating 296 passengers. PSA also became the only airline, airline customers to select the lower lounge option offered by Lockheed on the Elton 11. The lower lounge in PSA's configuration offered 16 saleable seats and was connected to the main passenger cabin by a staircase. In order to meet FAA certification standards to allow passenger occupation during takeoff and landing, extra structure had to be added to the belly of the fuselage in case of a wheels up landing. The lounge occupied part of the lower cargo compartment and the galley space, which was the main reason no other L1011 customer selected the option. PSA's first L1011, named Mother Grinningbird, entered service on August 1, 1974 while the second aircraft was loaned to Lockheed to be used for sales purposes at the Fumberug Air Show, being placed into regular service at the end of October. It quickly became apparent to the airline that the L-1011 was not built for its high-density commuter operation. For one, the airplane just wasn't designed for quick turnarounds like the Boeing 727, which PSA's fleet comprised of at the time. The L-1011 size and height meant that everything from provisioning the aircraft, fueling and unloading the baggage compartments took longer. The airline also found that by reducing flight frequencies on its key trunk routes between San Diego, Los Angeles and San Francisco, they lost customers. It turned out that passengers, especially, that passengers, especially business travelers, preferred having the flexibility its previous schedule had offered and, were not, and weren't willing to wait three to four hours between flights to fly in the larger L-1011. All of the airline's cost models that supported the decision to purchase the L-1011 were predicted on fuel prices in the 9.11 cents gallon range, but by the time of the, of the airplane's first revenue flight in August of 1974, the price of fuel was hovering around 30, 33 cents gallon, which presented a 200% increase in, a co in cost for the airline. At these prices, there was just no way to make the numbers work for the Elton 11, and the airline realized it needed to, 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 dispo it needed to dispose of the aircraft and quickly. But PSA wasn't the only airline to realize this as airlines around the world in response to the rising fuel costs began to dump fleets of almost of almost new wide-body 747s, DC-10s, and L-1011s on the market. The excessive supply of airplanes hurt the, re the resale value of the aircraft. The problem for PSA was, ex was, exacer was exacerbated by the airline's decision to opt for the lower, lower lounge option. This feature, which, which occupied a good portion of the forward cargo hold along with the lack of a fuel galley of a full galley, made these aircraft very unattractive to potential buyers, as the loss of revenue cargo space made it difficult for airlines to make money with the aircraft. The costs of, the costs of reconfiguring the plane could not be justified given the ready supply of other suitable wide bodies. In the end, PSA's wide body experiment lasted only 9 months. While it ultimately proved to be a failure, without the spike in fuel prices, one wonders whether the experiment would have lasted a little longer, if not proven itself to be profitable, at least for a time. And that was the video guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more content, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, bye.